Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Our guest today is Howard University jazz professor emeritus Dr. Arthur C. Dawkins. We ask you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is A Conversation in Jazz. Today we have a very special guest. He's very special to me, not only because he was my college professor and advisor, but also because he was a mentor to me and countless students of music on the campus of Howard University and other educational institutions. He has personally guided me on the path to receive both my undergraduate and graduate degrees in jazz studies at Howard University. Additionally, our guest has had a long, illustrious career as a musician, educator, clinician, contractor, college professor, and director of jazz studies. In fact, it was under his leadership that Howard University Jazz Studies achieved academic credibility and emerged as an incubator for world-class practitioners of the art form. Please welcome my Howard University College professor, Dr. Arthur Dawkins. Doc, how you doing? Glad to be here with you. I tried to get through that introduction. But <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great introduction. Yeah. yeah. Is it okay if I call you Doc? Yes. Yeah, okay. What are you, what are you <laughs> <Yeah>. like? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to A Conversation in Jazz. And happy Jazz Appreciation Month. Great to be here yes, for that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and before we get started, um, I just want to take this time to say thank you. You know, it's not uh, every day that a, that a student can interview his professor years later and say thank you um, for it, which you've been for me and countless other students. You know, and as an educator, I learned we don't appreciate our educators until years later. <laughs> and we don't understand the things that they were doing to make the, the thing work, I understand that. <laughs> great, great, great. And uh, I remember when I got to high, I was crazy. I was just as crazy. <laughs> um, I didn't know what an HBCU was. Um, I came to Howard because I had a teacher in high school that paid for me to visit. She was an alumnus at Howard. <laughs> And I came, she paid for me to visit. And when I visited, I heard the Howard University Jazz Ensemble at Crampton Auditorium. And I heard Kevin Levi. And I said, I'm going to Howard. <laughs> and uh, I auditioned Mr. Irby, and I got in. And I also got some scholarship. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all pull a lot of strings. <laughs> but yeah, and, and uh, I, I can say I grew up at Howard, you know. And so I wanted mm -hmm. to just say thank you. And uh, also apologize, for, you know, because I was, I, you know, I had no filter back mm -hmm. then. I spoke my mind, but I had a passion for for jazz and and for playing, but I didn't know how to how how life worked. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank you, formally. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> um. So what we do here is we learn, the, I call it the story behind the story, and you know, I've known you as my professor. And I've really learned a lot about the things that you've been doing and have done throughout your career. And we're going to talk about some of them. Okay. Okay? Now, so, let's start learning a little bit something about you. Where are you originally from? I was born in Lexington, North Carolina. Okay. 
And my parents came to Washington, oh, well, Alexandria, where I mm -hmm. spent all of my life. Uh, my father worked as a laborer, mm -hmm. and he came to work, uh, help build the, the Pentagon. Wow. As a, as a laborer, wow. a bricklayer. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he, he, he laid brick, but mm -hmm. he worked as a laborer. So he came, and it was a big job for him. And he brought my sister and I to Alexandria, okay. and my mother, father, as sister. And uh, I came to Alexandria in 1940, and uh, uh, that's where I stayed for the rest yeah. of my life. I still live there. What was it like when you were coming up? Mm -hmm. Now, did you come up segregation, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you saw all that? Just look at the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we came to Alexandria in 1940, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was staunchly segregated wow. at that time, uh, both in schools and in social situations and, and everything else. So yes, wow. we did come up through that uh, segregated yeah. situation. So, so we had a black community back then? Yes. And what was it like in the black community? Well, uh, I, I, I think that's responsible. The black community is responsible for my whatever successes I had. Mm -hmm. It came from uh, my my mentors mm -hmm. and teachers and, wow. and peers in the black community because wow. we didn't, didn't associate with the, you know with mm -hmm. the other race. Yeah, yeah. So, did you come from a musical family? No. No. I was the I was the first and the only one. Okay. Uh, I I have uh, two brothers and a sister, and none of them played music. Well, my my, my youngest brother did play saxophone okay. at, at one time, but uh, he found that yeah. something else to do. So how did you get involved in music? Um, my teacher at um, Parker Gray, uh, that was a high school that mm -hmm. I went to. Um, God gave me the opportunity to play uh, um, very early, uh, actually in the seventh grade. I was 12 years mm -hmm. old, and I started on the clarinet okay. and was able to get in the band, but it was primarily the responsibility of my teacher, E.L. Patterson. E.L. Patterson, <laughs> yes. And, and, and how, what was his influence on you? Well, he actually gave me the opportunity to... to, to formally stu study music, mm -hmm. but also in getting me involved with his band. He had mm -hmm. a great band. And, uh, yeah. uh, after a couple of years um, of training, mm -hmm. I was able to just to, to, be, to perform in, in his group. Wow. I read that you also, at two years later, you start pl you picked up the saxophone. Yes. Okay. Now, did that become your main acts at, at one time? Or? Yeah, by, by, by the time I finished, uh, high school, uh, I was playing saxophone and clarinet. Okay. And yeah. and flute actually, uh, uh, which I I was kind of dabbling yeah. in a lot of things. Gotcha. <laughs> now, how did you? What inspired you to become a music educator or to pursue the path of music? Well, <laughs> that was not not really difficult because from from, from my successful experiences. Uh, as a musician and as a learner, mm -hmm. uh, and seeing some of the things that, that my teachers did for me, both music and, and non-music, mm -hmm. I was quite influenced by, by, by the people who taught me. Wow. Oh, beautiful. And you're, you said, you're, I read that your early years, you were going to the Alexandria Public Schools? Yes. Okay. Now, after high school, you went to college. Yes. Where'd you go to, to college? Virginia State College in Petersburg. Virginia okay. State College. And, and, and what inspired you to go there? Again, my, my teacher, uh, Mr. Patterson, got, well, what, what, it wasn't a scholarship, but he had uh, some influence to, to, to have me uh, prepare for admission. Uh, so I, I went in, in as a, I passed the audition and, and had to do other um, uh, Prerequisites, uh -huh. but he helped me to to be prepared for my wow. freshman year at Virginia State. So, were you a strong reader and those sort of things? I, I, I guess you could say I was a strong <laughs> reader. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I learned I, I, I learned to read first, I guess, before I even 
thought about improvising. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, I, I, I did that first. Yeah. All right. And, and when you went to college, what was your major? Music education. Music education. And I was preparing to be a band director, which I was after mm -hmm. after the four years of, mm -hmm. in, in Pittsburgh. Wow. So, and you didn't after you got your your bachelor, you went on to get you got a you earned your master's and a yeah. PhD degree. Yeah. In psychology. Mm-hmm. From Catholic University of America. Right. Now you were going to be a psychologist at some point. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was very interested. It actually, it's educational psychology. That's what that was the major that, mm -hmm. that, that, that I took, both in the masters and uh, the PhD program. But I was planning to. Um, uh, I thought at one time that the, the situation in in the public schools were not going to uh, be as beneficial to me as it had turned out. Mm -hmm. So I was preparing myself to do something else. Gotcha. And what what turns you back? The music. The, mu <laughs> <laughs> the music brought you back, huh? Bo bo brought me back. I tried a few other things, and uh -huh. uh, 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 the music was what the thing. That now, you, you mentioned that you were an instrumental music teacher? Yes. Okay, where'd you teach? I taught at the high school that I attended as a student. Oh, wow. I came back to that same high school to uh, first, first, first two or three, year, three years mm -hmm. to be an assistant to my teacher, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Patterson. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he, Mr. Patterson got, got, was promoted to uh, assistant principal. And after my third year or fourth year as his assistant with the high school band, I became the high school band director. Wow. And, uh, which was a bit to ask for for a twenty two year old. Yeah, yeah. So were you doing marching band and con the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing, marching band. <laughs> we did parades. Yeah, well, that's why I, why I teach elementary school. Mm -hmm. Cause I I know in high school I, I I'm not a marching band cat. You know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get away from it in yeah. high school. It takes up a lot of time too. Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure on you yeah. to do a lot of things that you probably wouldn't do. Yeah, and so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I read also that you taught for about thirteen years mm -hmm. in the public schools. In the public schools, and you became a school administrator. Mm -hmm. Wow! You were a vice principal. Yes, I was at T. C. Williams High School in Virginia. Yes. Now, <laughs> what what's, how, what made you go into administration? Well. I I think I was uh, I don't want to say forced, but I think I was encouraged mm -hmm. to go in administration uh, by the community that um, my I, I, there was a lot of pressure on the, the the school administration to hire black administrators. Okay, and uh, I, I'm not sure where they got the. The idea that the fact that I was a good band director, mm -hmm. I would also be a good principal. But <laughs> <laughs> it'll play work out that way. Now, T.C. Williams High School was also memorialized in a featured film. Yes. Remember the Titans. Mm. And uh, Denzel Washington was in that. Yes. That's the ex school you were at. Exact school. That's the school, school I was there. And I worked along with Herman Boone, who was a coach at, 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 yeah. uh, of that team. Really? Uh, we came to T.C. Williams the same year. The, the, the only thing was I only stayed one year, and he stayed 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he made a very good day for him and his students. So did the movie uh, depict his character? I know, I know it's Hollywood, but... Yes, I think it, I think it was fairly close. It was mm -hmm. nothing would be perfect, but wow. it was fairly close, and you could get the idea of his his demeanor. And uh, he yeah. was a very pushy guy. I don't know if you know saxophonist Von Ambrose. Mm -hmm. He teaches there. Yes. Yeah. Not yet. I know. I know he taught there. Mm hmm. Because um, he was telling me about the school that they did the movie at. Mm hmm. And they have, you know, that's wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now I was only there for a year, so. It was, um, uh, uh, I was, I, could, I do remember mm -hmm. the notoriety that it came to that school after that. Wow. Uh, by the way, the, the, the name T.C. Williams has been changed okay. uh, to the Alexandria 
public school, oh no, Alexandria High School. Oh, wow. And the reason why there was a change because mm -hmm. uh, the namesake of uh, T.C. Williams was a you know, fairly uh, prejudicial okay, got you. Oh, individual. Got and you. and yeah. the, 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 the citizens of Alexandria changed that name. Wow. That's, that's interesting. This last year, that happened last year. This happened last year? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, we're in, we in that kind of season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's talk about the Howard Theater. Mm -hmm. I read that early in your developmental years that you would frequent the Howard Theater to check out the great masters of swing and modern jazz. Mm -hmm. What was the Howard Theater like back then? Well, um, I could see Count Basie. Um, I saw... I saw Coach, I saw Miles there, uh -huh. Miles with his quintet. Uh -huh. I saw um, all of the name, uh, and this I'm, I, uh, this is what I was between, uh, let's say, 15 and 20 yeah. years, yeah. years yeah. of age to go in. I couldn't go into the clubs, but I could see all of those people wow. at the Howard Theater. Now, this was before the riots, right? Yes. So Howard Theater, they, they refurbished it now as, an, as another kind of thing. But, um, do you remember those rights? Yes. And do you remember like that quarter of, of U Street and Absolutely. how that used to be back in the day? Absolutely. Wow. I I I was in that band for two years and I, uh, I met Bobby Felder. Okay. Who was mm -hmm. uh, who played trombone in the band. And Ian he and I became good friends at okay. that time, at the mm -hmm. time that we were in. Uh and uh Bobby Bobby Phil and the Blue Notes. Uh -huh. He convinced me to leave the Howard Theater and join his band. The Blue Notes. <laughs> oh, you played with the Blue Notes? Yes, I did. I, wow. I, I played with I played with Bobby, and he was a great friend. Continued yeah. to yeah. be a great friend. I interviewed him, and he, he told me about yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he had quite an influence on me. Um, he Bobby had a great deal to do with me leaving. My administration job in Alexandria, because uh, he he was at the time starting the the, the federal city music department, yeah. okay. and uh, he offered me a job to work with him at wow. the at the at the uh, uh, beginning days of federal city. Mm -hmm. But he and I played in the Howard Theater Band together for several wow. years. Wow! So would. Would y'all play for the different acts that would come through? Yes. Y'all would be the back backup band. And Absolutely. That sort of wow. Now, before we start interviewing, you told me that you got to see Charlie Parker. Yes. You heard him play live. I heard Charlie Parker on the stage of the Howard Theater, first of all. Uh -huh. And then there were other places that he played in town, uh, clubs that he played on, on, on uh, U Street. Um, uh, and, and there was a, a, a beach that uh -huh. uh, he played called Cars mm -hmm. Beach, mm -hmm. and I would come. We would go out to hear, hear him. That's out in Prince Williams County, somewhere in in, uh, in 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 Maryland. But I saw him many times. Wow! Both on the, the on on the the, the uh, clubs uh -huh. and also at the Howard Theater. Wow! What was it like? I, you know, I, you know, I'm a bird guy. Yeah. I <laughs> so what was it like? Like to me, Bird has something otherworldly. Yeah. To me. Okay. You know, I would say. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but but I only can exp I only can experience it through the records. Yes. And I, I heard it through the records at a young age. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it like hearing it live? Well, I I, I guess you just, you just kind of mesmerized in, in in the sense that. He has he he has such a do, dominant personality yeah. that you can't uh, yeah. ignore it, and, yeah. and uh, yeah. it was it was really a true true truly experience to hear him live. And then on the other side, you got to experience John Coltrane. Yes, yes, we did. Again, that was in D.C. at the, at the Bohemian Caverns, and again, most of the time, for those artists that that we were talking, these classic artists. Um, the 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 city. I mean, the, they they could only perform for the venues within the black community. Wow. So mm -hmm. instead of playing for large audiences, we saw them in the neighborhood. Wow. So uh, that's that's heavy, man. I mean, so did you know 
that they would make the impact on jazz back then when you were in them? Or were they just wreck, were they just cats that was playing in the you know in the neighborhood? <laughs> 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 well, we had we did have um, uh, some of the, the, the local musicians to challenge. Then Buck Hill was known to challenge yeah, some yeah, of those yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, legends. Yeah. But uh, uh, that, that's that's no reflection on Buck because Buck was a great player, yeah, yes, you sir. know. Yes, he was. Uh, uh, but yeah, those those legends really kind of stood out on their own. Yeah. Do you do you, do you uh, pinch yourself sometimes to know that you probably seen a, I mean I'm sorry you sure you saw uh, uh, Sonny Rollins? Yes. Uh, did you see Pops? Yes. Yeah. Duke Ellington. I saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can what? tell you the places that that I saw these. Well, uh, uh, Louis Armstrong I saw at the Carter Baron, the same Carter Baron Amphitheater. Wow. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Which was a big, big uh, uh, setting, mm -hmm. and it may have been segregated at the time, but I, maybe maybe it wasn't. But I did see Louis Armstrong and Louis and Ella. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the Carla Baron. Do you know, you familiar with the Carla Baron? Yeah, yeah, I played, yeah. I played, I played there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, Duke I saw in his later years uh, 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 at, at a public school. At wow. School Without Walls. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's on on, on 16th Street or something. Wow. I think it's still the villa may be gone. Mm. And um, I saw, uh, uh, of course, Duke, I saw him many times at the Howard and 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 other venues. Wow, that's man. That you know, I'm like a little kid, man. When I when you start talking about all the cats, I'm like, wow, you know, those are the cats. You know, great. Are uh, you were known as one of the area's most respected and versatile freelance musicians and contractor. Okay. You were known as a proficient woodwind doubler and a flutist extraordinaire. Equally at home in the National Symphony Orchestra as well as the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Orchestra. Also along with the great Calvin Jones, yes. Mr. Mr. Calvin Jones, you were among the first African-American musicians to regularly perform in the pit orchestras of major the theatrical venues of post-segregationist Washington. Wow. Now, what's the difference between pre-segregation um, livelihood for musicians and post-segregation? Well, again, the, the public accommodation laws that came about in the 60s, uh, late 50s, I guess, whatever it was, uh -huh. early 60s, uh, prevented black musicians, uh, first of all, to be members of the, of the union. And uh, it was so, so the fact that we could not belong to, to the, the, the the national union or, or the, the the major union, which is 161. Uh, we played um, uh, purely things that were uh, housed mm -hmm. under the black union. Okay. So that that in itself. What was the uh, black union called? It was called uh, Local One, no, Local Seven Ten. Okay. And it was on Seventh um, and uh, the the office was on on Ninth um, uh, and uh, T Street. Mm, gotcha. The, yeah. the building is still there. Wow. But the the you know the segregated Washington had had had, had a, you know, very strong restrictions on which building you could play in. Wow. <laughs> so, did it get better because of the integration, or did, did you get more gigs? Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And Calvin and I, and, and many other, Lady Drennan, uh, and many others uh, uh, that were were at at, at the time uh, approached about playing, uh, joining on the, the sixty one. Mm -hmm. That's the what logo. Uh, once we joined, uh, then we the opportunities opened up for us. Wow, beautiful! I read that for twenty five years, 
you served as a musical contractor at Arena Stage, mm -hmm. considered among the nation's premier regional theaters. As a contractor, you employed hundreds of musicians in a variety of settings, including pit orchestras, sound recordings, television, and concerts. How'd you get into contracting? <laughs> Well, again, I think the the, the whole uh, issue of uh, affirmative action, um, I would assume that they, I was hired because of my abilities, mm -hmm. but affirmative action had a lot to do with it. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I got you. Now, now, now the difference was uh, that the, the affirmative action uh, opportunities came but you still, I still had to produce. Yeah. I had to you know, yeah, be a good yeah. administrator, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I, I stayed. The fact that I stayed there twenty five years. Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy doing that? I, I enjoyed it, but not as much as, as I did just being a, a musician. Player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were doing that and at Howard. Yes, that's called double dipping. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what does that, briefly, what does that entail, the contract, when you contract it? Well, in the, in the musical theater, which is probably one of the most lucrative areas for, for freelancers because of the length of time that the musicians are used. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you some of the shows were um, ran two or three weeks at, okay. at, at a time. So, uh, you would. I, I was, was, was. It was my responsibility to hire musicians based on the the, the play that was or the the musical that was going. So to you be. had a rolodex of, of musicians. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about Federal uh, City College. Okay. You mentioned that uh, you left teaching, mm -hmm. being an instrumental teacher, and uh, you said Bobby Felder. Brought me there. Um, brought you there. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your? Um, so you became a professor. Yeah. You went from being a teacher to professor. Is that the same thing? No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit different. A little, little bit different. Now, now okay. for me, I had up until I went to Federal City, go uh, went to work at Federal City. I had worked with mostly teenagers and and adolescents. Okay. That was, Federal City College is my first job working with adults. Okay. And one of my best students, Kenyatta, James Palmore, mm. uh, was a, was was one of my first students wow. at Federal City. Uh -huh. He played tenor. Are, are you familiar with him? Kenyatta. James yeah, Palmore. I, Kenyatta. I may. Rest yeah. his soul. Okay. Yeah. But he played. That's um, not the tall cat that played yes, tennis. Absolutely. They used to play on the corner. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember that cat. You played. You played on the corner too. Oh yeah. That, okay. Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> that was my hustle <laughs> when I was at Howard. <laughs> Kenyatta was my first adult student. Wow. wow. And he was such a fantastic individual, uh, very very bright fellow, uh, and uh, uh, he did. Uh, he passed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. He played several years ago. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. But he he was one of my first, and and I was very pleased that it was college college was going to be that yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it was great. Wow. Now, did you have that kind of experience with the students in high school? Not that much, but uh, I had I guess the student that. That uh, sticks out mostly to me uh, is a student who's professionally, his name is Jose Hernandez. Okay. Uh, so he was one of the, maybe the only one that kept the music going from, gotcha. from high school. Wow. And he's performing professionally now quite well. Okay. So what was your what position, what were your, your title or position at Federal City College? I was a, an assistant professor with, um, um, uh, well, there were, I think, two or three others on the faculty at uh, uh, Pearl Williams Jones. And Miss Judy, Ju Judy Corey? Yes, she was there. Yes, uh -huh. she was there. But um, I taught woodwinds. I taught clarinet. Okay. Um, and and uh, 
and flute and saxophone. Yep. Um, and as time went on, we, we kind of uh, developed mm -hmm. other instrumentalists to come in. Wow. How long were you at, how long were you at, at Federal City? I worked there 10 years, and the, the last, the last 10 years, I was doing part Federal City and part Howard when they were just starting the school, the, the music school at Howard. Oh, wow. That leads us right into Howard University. Yeah. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you get the gig at Howard? Well, I had, um, <laughs> I was working with, with freelancing with, uh, with, with, with Fred Irby, mm -hmm. uh, and he, who was teaching there, who had been teaching there a couple of years. Okay. And um, I had, uh, uh, he told me that he was, it, they were trying, they wanted to find uh -huh. a director, a mm -hmm. jazz studies director. Oh, wow. He told me about it, and I thought about it for a lot, and, and uh, because uh, Howard has a reputation of being very political, and it's not <laughs> yeah. the most difficult place to work. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, Federal City was not like that. Okay. It was a very progressive system. That, uh -huh. uh, so I had, I thought I had to think, think a lot about it, but uh, I did go uh, and uh, had yeah. an, an interview to take uh, Bird's okay. place. Okay, I'm just going to say, so the great trumpeter, Donald Bird, mm -hmm. now is, he is famously credited for, with establishing uh, jazz studies at Howard? Yes. Um, Absolutely, but it was under your leadership that Howard uh, yeah. University Jazz Studies achieved academic credibility and emerged as an incubator for world class practitioners of the art form. Okay, I um, take all that, but uh, Bird did not. Uh, Bird was only there for four years. Okay, so after his fourth year, there was a a little bit of a. Uh, I guess I'll, I don't want to call it intervention, but there was a, <laughs> there was a, <laughs> after four years, um, the, the program kind of ling lingered, uh, okay. and uh, I thought about it, and, and uh, but he didn't, he didn't leave me a curriculum. Wow. Uh, because he had only been there for four years. Yeah. And, so um, you basically had to build it from scratch. Yes, yes. Wow. But had some very good people to work with, and... Um, Wow. So the Jazz Studies program at Howe, initially, you, it initially, um, once it got accredited, you had, you got offered a, a Bachelor of Jazz Studies, mm -hmm. and eventually you have a Master's. Yes. Yeah. Based on the work of uh, Dr. Reverend Stone, who was oh, fantastic, was fantastic yeah. as well, developing curriculum, and like he was, wow. I couldn't have made it without him. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dr. Stone, Dr. Rep, the late, great Dr. Rep Hart Stone. Yes. Oh, man, he was a character. <laughs> <laughs> so he helped you to build the Yes, program? he came my fourth year at Howard. He mm -hmm. came. Okay. And that fourth year, I was just getting accreditation for the undergraduate program. And it immediately came, because he's such an, an innovator. Uh, he, he would start planning for a master's program, mm -hmm. and uh, over, a couple, over the next two or three years, we developed a master's program, mm -hmm. and uh, we were the first master's program in jazz studies in most universities, not HBCU, but in most, yeah. we were the first. But you were the first jazz studies program in, of HBCU, Yes. Correct? Wow. So but we were also the first jazz studies among uh, more than 5%. Uh, of all universities. Wow. In 1979, there were only 5% of all universities, you know, you know with, yeah. with comprehensive jazz programs. Yeah, there was, I heard that there, sometimes you couldn't play jazz at certain... Um, um, Including Howard University. Really? It was a time... <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've come a long way, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what is it, um, what does it, what was involved in getting accreditation? Mm -hmm. Like, what... What was the process, that process, like getting accreditation? Well, first of all, we had to, uh, we had to, it was primarily me at the, at the beginning, and then uh, Robert Stone came in to help me with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the masters. And, 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 but you've got to 
uh, present a curriculum mm -hmm. uh, which will would include some of the areas that we thought very important, including uh, improvisation, history, uh, computerized music, and all that. So we had to present that curriculum. I had to present that curriculum okay. to the Association of um, Accrediting okay. Universities. And, and what year did were you able to get the accreditation? Uh, the, we, we were accredited in 1982 or 83. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now, Doc, when you were at Howard, was Mr. Irby? Yes. Mr. Fred Irby, was he already there? Yes, he was there. He was there. In fact, he was there the year before I came. Okay. And he talked me into coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> so, um, did he? When did he start um, the Howard University Jazz and something? Well, I, I think he started the first year that he came. Oh, so when you there. got there, he was running the right, the, right, okay. right, right. And prior to that, Donald Burr. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the great pianist John Malachi? Mm -hmm. He passed shortly bef before I got to... In fact, my high school year, when I came to Howard to visit, um, they were celebrating his, his passing. Mm -hmm. at, they were, I think the band was playing at Crampton Auditorium. And uh, so I never got to meet him. Mm -hmm. um, w w did, did you bring him in? Yes. Okay. He, w he was out... First adjunct. Uh, okay. I I got I had Reverend Stone first as as a full time professor. Then uh, uh, John Malachi was the first adjunct professor, who was fantastic. Uh, not only just a, a, as a as a pianist, but uh, as a theoretician. He really? his, wow. his his knowledge of theory and and harmonies and that kind of thing. He came in uh, my third year. Okay. In fact, he was the first adjunct. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of uh, responsibility to come in. And you probably was a young guy back then. Yes. And they say you got, you're the director <laughs> of jazz studies. You have to get us accreditation. I mean, was that intimidating for you? Yes, it was. It was because... We all defensive of what we, meaning most of us who were working mm -hmm. in that idiom, had not been uh, uh, exposed to all the bureaucracy. But it was it was intimidating that most of the accredi accrediting institutions, um, situations or institutions did not uh, give specific instructions on what would be included in the various courses. Wow. So. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, Stone and I, uh, really just not created uh, uh, a false yeah. kind of accreditation. We we did work and had put a lot of thought in yeah. what was going to be accredited. Yeah, because when I when I got there, it was up and running. <laughs> <laughs> it was up and running. Um, so. I read that in 1978, the wonderful guitarist Noble Jolly, he became the first graduate yes. at, uh, uh, at Howard University to earn a Bachelor of Music and Jazz Studies. Yeah, that's right. Wow. I, I, I met him. I knew him. He was a good, good cat mm. and before he passed, but, uh, and, he, and he got some wonderful uh, children that, that are great musicians. So, yeah. So he was the first. One of the, he, he was the first, right. The first, right. wow. Right. Wow. All right. Now, okay, in 83, that's when Howard University became the first HBCU to offer a master's degree mm -hmm. in jazz studies. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and and you said Dr. Stone was... was uh, quite, in, quite influential yeah, in, 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 in getting that. that. Okay. In 87... In 1987, under the auspices of the U.S. State Department, you toured several African countries mm -hmm. uh, with some Howard students. What, yeah. was, what was that experience like? Uh, it was terrific. Yeah. Uh, you went with some of the places, uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah. Um, Zambia. Burkina Faso. Is that how you say it? Yeah, that's right. right. Senegal. <laughs> wow. Zambia. 
Zambia? Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, I did a tour like that in Africa with Vince Evans. Is that how many countries? I, I, went, you to, to I went to seven countries. I went oh, okay. to uh, Nigeria, uh -huh. Ghana, Togo, the Congo, Zaire, Morocco, and Tunisia. Oh. And a uh, great experience. So it was through the U.S. I, uh, United States Information Agency. Yes. Yeah. So was that the similar kind of? Similar kind. So you, you were ambassadors. Kind. Yes. Wow. Similar kind. Now, did you perform with the students? Yes. Yeah. How did they receive you? They, they they were just fantastic. Really? In fact, we had Aaron uh, Walker was the drummer, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a, a, a thing that we did on a night in Tunisia, mm -hmm. where we'd have African drummers come up and play with us. Yeah. Uh, this was like our finale. Wow! And uh, <clears throat> it, was, it was fantastic wow. that they they received us as yeah. stars. So Aaron Walker was on that tour. Yeah, yeah, and because that African thing in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his brother. You know, I lived with Aaron for uh, for several years. Okay, okay. Yeah, we lived together, and uh, and Raymond Angry, mm -hmm. and uh, Aaron would had his uh, he was playing his drums, um, and I mean, but the way he plays his his drum set is very really African. Yes. So that might have had. A I'm deep sure it had some influence yeah. because yeah. the 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 tour was so had so much impact on all of us mm -hmm. that uh, we all were. Really touched by it. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So, I'm trying to get my stuff together here. <laughs> All right. Talk about some of the students that came out of the Howard University jazz program. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to name. I ain't, ain't going to get all of them. Okay. We got Jerry Allen. Okay. Mark Batson. I'm, Stephen Baxter, mm -hmm. Michael Bearden, Ravi Bess, Aaron Brothers, Gordon Campbell, Paul Carr, Chris Dave, wow, Cal um, DeShill, Junior Singh, all of them. <laughs> every, every, not, only, not only did I see them, I served as their advisor as I did you. Wow. I That's... served as, in fact, when I retired in 2005, I had, it, I mean, um, signed off uh -huh. on more than 300 students. Wow. And you that, were one yeah. of them. Oh, man, I'm, and I'm blessed. <laughs> 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 I say that, I say that not seriously because a lot of times you don't really understand, you don't get the full impact of what you got mm -hmm. until you get out in the world. And those stories that you hear the, the professor telling you, you know, that's when it start making sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, and 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 then the beautiful thing as well is that, you know, most of these guys are doing great things. Yes, most of the people are doing great things. Kevin Levi, yes, uh, uh, Marcus Johnson, Dr. Saeed Kamala, who's who's now professor at Howard. Right. Uh, when Art Harper went there, yes. Wow, I didn't know that. William No, Jonathan mm -hmm. Lane, um, Wayne Lindsay, mm -hmm. Keith Kilgo, Greg Osby. Wow. Wallace Roney, Chris Royal, Gregory Royal, Warren Shad. Yes. Clarence C. <laughs> Lorraine Lamb, Marcus Rabb, Dr. William Smith. Uh, I served as every one of them. Yeah. Wow. As their <laughs> faculty advisor. Wow. Every, every lame that you mentioned. What, what, what is, I mean, when you look back on that, is there a sense of pride? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know I, I get, I've been teaching long and I taught most primarily elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I always say the beautiful thing about teaching is is years later mm -hmm. when the kids come back to you when you can see them. <laughs> and I get kids that, that I've taught and I'm uh, through this thing called Facebook. Mm -hmm. They'll connect with me and, and, and they're very thankful. And back then they were just as crazy. <laughs> but I mean, that's the greatest, one of the greatest feelings and, and the, for being an educator. So. I want you to promise to be the subject of um, an interview with one of your students. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. That'd be interesting. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't, most of my students are elementary kids. Right, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Um, so some years. of them, I got a student that went into music, um, so I'm going to see if I can reach reach out. That'd be, that'd be, I, don't, I don't know if any of them became jazz musicians, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I really tried to strengthen that basic um, 
music uh, fundamentals yes. in elementary school. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, Vinny Valentino, Davey Yarbrough, Kebby Williams, Gary Thomas, Tim Warfield, Kevin Tony. Kevin Tony. Wow. I was his faculty advisor. When, once he came back off the road, when he came back to school, mm -hmm. wow. I was his advisor, and I was also Kevin Tony's advisor to do his yeah, yeah. Uh, bachelor's degree and master's That's degree. Mm. Yeah. Now, who were some of the professors, the great professors that that um, that you worked with? Um, I know we mentioned um, Dr. Stone. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Grady Stone. Tate. Grady, Grady Tate, mm -hmm. Mr. Fred Irby, mm -hmm. um, Charlie Young, who's yeah. still there. Um, um, Mr. Lee Lockman, I, I studied mm -hmm. under him for one, a couple of years. Kim Bay, Mr. Kim, Kim Bay, yes. Al Alco Berger, um, Kanitri yeah. Miller, yes. Cyrus Chestnut. Steve, did Steve know himself? Was Steve? He was, he, yeah, sure. he was a, he was a part-time, uh, you know, adjunct professor wow. there for many years. Jessica yeah. Settles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Wow. So this, what you, so was this your vision? Did you see all this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see all that, but uh -huh. uh, I was presently surprised mm. when when it turned out this way. Yeah, uh, we had a kind of difficult start, and uh, some of the early students uh, before jazz was sort uh, had a great impact on me and and the way that that program was going to turn out. Um, uh, wow. One of the, uh, um, Akua Aldridge's father did, was... Did she, did she go to Howard as well? She went to Howard. I didn't know that. Wow. She went to Howard, and her father was president of the student council back before we had just taught there. But he was very, very important in putting pressure on the university uh, administrators at that time uh -huh. uh, that evolved into the job that I got wow. 20 years later. Yeah, yeah. So uh, many, 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 many people had visions yeah, yeah. that I didn't see at the time, but gotcha. it turned out quite well. Is there a period during your, was it 30 years? Yes, 30 years. Is there a period that when it was just like really just <laughs> the jazz studies program. Well, I think when you were there, it was hot. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, you know, um, yeah, I had a, I had, I mean, we lived in the practice room, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so it was, we played on the, in front of the Fine Arts building and, and the whole night. So yeah, it was, me and I Warren Shad, we had this argument who had the best, who was, who was the best. Uh, Howard University Jazz and South. Yeah, so. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, the Howard University Jazz Ensemble, what are some of the um, the ensembles, the, that notable ensembles coming out of Howard University? Well, that's... The jazz like, Yeah, I, I don't think I could, could pick one. Yeah. Uh, but um, those 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 groups that, um, so, I think... H-U-J, Howard University Jazz Ensemble. Yeah. Afro Blue. Afro Blue, yeah. Yeah, and... Yeah, and it's a jazz tech. Wow, that was a group that I took to Africa. Okay, and, yeah. and, and yeah. that was the first use mm -hmm. of that term, jazz tech. Uh, when I so whenever you see about jazz tech in Africa, that's my group. Okay, that gotcha, was gotcha. Part of them. Okay, so you retired after thirty years. Mm -hmm. Okay, how'd you know it was time? Um, to, to, to leave. <laughs> well, I don't know if I, I don't know if I planned it that way, but um, I could tell. Uh, well, I, one of my dreams was to have a highly developed vocal program. Okay. Vocal jazz mm -hmm. program. And after the several tries uh, to getting people to to run that. That I found Kenneth Miller. Yeah. And uh, at that point, um, it, it she, she took that program Ooh. far along, oh, along beyond <laughs> where I thought it would go. Uh -huh. And that that was the, the signal for me. I said, well, maybe you've done yeah, your job yeah. now. You got to. You know, I was very very happy to have a jazz vocal program. Okay. So that that had a lot of influence to do. 
with me. So who's the director now? At now? The, the Kalejira. She's the director of Jazz Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Mm -hmm. Some good hands. Yes. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's yeah. a... a mm -hmm. Um, she's done a wonderful, amazing job mm -hmm. with the students. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? <laughs> I would like my legacy to be um, <coughs> this country boy came from North Carolina mm -hmm. to the big city mm -hmm. and touched and taught mm -hmm. and advised. Mm -hmm. A hundred and hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And they to to enjoy yeah. the music idiom. Okay. Well you've done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> um how you how how's the retirement life? You, well, I'm I'm kind of busy trying preparing uh, uh programs like this one that you have now. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you still busy? Yeah. Okay, see, mm -hmm. that's love. That's what you call dedication. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the Howard University Jazz Oral Project? Oral History. Oral History, I'm sorry. The Howard University Jazz Oral History Project. Yeah. Yes. That project uh, started initially in 1985 with the funding from the National Endowment of the Arts, for, I think the original funding was was uh, twenty five thousand, okay. and it was to to uh, uh, do oral histories on uh, some of the preeminent uh, uh, bebop establishments, including uh, Milt uh, and Dizzy mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, uh, Art, uh, Art uh, the drummer. Ah, Blakey. Ah, Blakey. Ah, Blakey. All those yeah. uh, names mm -hmm. are in the uh, uh, the uh, oral history uh, repertoire. Okay. So uh, we have, uh, uh, oh, and and we continue to the the, the, the uh, project is still active, mm -hmm. and we're now including contemporary, uh, oh, not contemporary, but um, younger uh, musicians. So okay. It Great. it's housed in the Moreland Spingarn Center. And uh, you, it's open to the public. Is that still in, is that that's still in the library? Yeah, know, still yeah. in the library. Absolutely. I, we used to go there. I remember when we were at Howard, they had a we can go down in the library and listen to records. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can still do that now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now you can also look at some of the films of the of the legends. Wow, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's also on. You have an online. Yes. It's also online. So yeah. You can go online. Go through the uh, uh, spin. Moral Spingarn Center, okay, uh, and uh, it's called the Howard University Jazz Oral History Project. Yeah, I was listening to a, a tribute that y'all did for Jerry Allen. Mm -hmm. Man, you playing soprano? Uh, you sounded great. I said, "Well, Doc is in here killing it." <laughs> wow, the late uh, Jerry Allen. What? What? Uh, uh, do you remember when uh, Jerry was a student? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so that tribute that was on one of the. Uh, uh, the H uh, U J E. Yeah, I think I think it was it was it was a tribute after her, after her death. Okay. And and I believe it's uh, seventeen. Uh, okay. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Man, beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I want to talk about Andrew White, mm -hmm. who also he wasn't in jazz studies, but I think he was studying theory at Howard. Right. Right. Uh, music theory. Mm -hmm. I w I was at his. Uh, we did a through the um, DC Jazz Festival. We did a, a tribute to uh, uh, Andrew White, mm -hmm. and I went to his house, his cousin, and we're just looking through all his, you know, his uh, works, and and I'm like, man, we, and in my mind, I'm saying, how do we preserve this? This guy was a genius. Yes, I mean his calligraphy. Much like Doctor Doctor uh, Stone, Stone yeah. absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> was yeah. just, you know, perfection, and uh, uh, and I was thinking, man, what? How about the Morley Springer? I mean, I'm, be... I'm I'm positive that that would be a great place to to house that, yes. and uh, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and uh, if his estate would be interested, 
I'm sure that, that we could talk to more than spending on uh, okay. the housing. Well, I'm going to talk to his cousin. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's the start. Yeah, man. That would be great. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, Aaron, I mean, uh, Andrew White is my, my, <coughs> my hero. He's why I do this stuff, like mm. independent stuff. Because I, you know, um, what I liked about Andrew is that he validated himself. Mm -hmm. And so, and I learned that from, and, and he would come out to the clubs and check you out. <laughs> and give you and encourage me. So, and and just he was just a great person, human being, and 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 an artist. So, yeah, yeah. I hope we can make that happen. Yeah, I'm sure that that, that I could, I would do 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 all I can to see that that, that we can house whatever okay. his his estate would would permit. That okay. We, we, yeah. We, we we would have to get you know permission from his, his yeah. people. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, to, that's a great can, idea. Let me see if we can try to make that happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that damn. All right. All right. <clears throat> now you also was connected with the International Association right. for Jazz Education, the mm -hmm. IJE, which right. is now no longer in right. existence. Um, I didn't know you served as a vice. You were, did you were your vice president one time? Yeah, with, with Dave Baker was the president. Oh wow! And I was, I was his vice president. Wow! For four years. Yeah, that's beautiful. And and you've done cl uh, clinics and and that sort of thing and, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, beautiful. Wow. Well, it's the uh, you was um, the Clifford Brown Stan Getz Fellows. Okay, what was that? That was a part of IJ. They had students. Uh, mm -hmm. They chose students, musicians from all over the country to to form a sextet mm -hmm. or a quintet or what have you, a small group that would play at a major jazz festival. Mm -hmm. Now the one that I conducted was, was, was we did it at Monterey at the Monterey Jazz okay. Festival in uh, ninety three or four or five something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it included um, um, students from all, all it, including the bass player that Winton uses in his um, uh, wow yeah Nickerson's band wow you also affiliated with the Music Educators National Conference the M E N C mm -hmm. wow so you you in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some of your achievements. Okay. All right. Um, D okay. You were presented the DC Jazz Festival Life Achievement Award mm -hmm. at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Art for your contributions in jazz education. And was that from the DC Jazz Festival? Yeah, from from DC Jazz Festival. Wow. Right. right. That was quite an honor. And uh, to have it in the Kansas Center and, and have all of my students and Fred, Fred students were also there. Uh, but um, it was quite an honor for Howard mm -hmm. uh, to have that night yeah. just for, for, for Howard students. Uh, and I read you got, you, you got something, a, a lifetime achievement from Howard or something, didn't you? Yeah, that was. <laughs> 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 You're not dreaming these things up, are you? No. <laughs> 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 it could have been, yeah. They, they, they could have been some yeah. uh, uh, faculty award or okay. something yeah. at one time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> wow. So now you know we can't do one of these, and I'm not give you an award. Okay. So I want you to stay right there. Okay. And I'll be right back. So Doc, this is from me, and uh, this is a com from the Conversation and Jazz Channel. Oh, wow. and we just want to recognize. You know what, what you have been for education, <laughs> all right? And this is oh, a service to jazz award. Oh, right, that is terrific. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so it's just our token of appreciation uh, for 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 uh, all that you've done and all that you've been to us and the jazz community and jazz education. It's been a pleasure. Yes, yes. Thank I'm you. Like real pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll put it up for you. Okay. <laughs> Did you you also got the uh, the Benny Golson? Did you get the Benny Golson Award? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I got it the same year as Jerry and uh, Wallace got it. I think we were three at that time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now what is the that's a part of the what is the Benny Golson Award? 
Bit, Betty Goldman Award is, is an award that was uh, created by uh, Fred Irby uh, for Betty mm -hmm. Goldman as, as, as the image uh, on, on the award. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he created that, uh, uh, oh, I would say in the early 90s. Okay. And, um, and each year he uh, um, awarded prominent musicians and educators and wow. now, now, now some of the people on that list of um, uh, the the congressman that that from, from New York that did the jazz um, mm -hmm. uh, appreciation okay month so, so there are a few few uh, politicians on that okay uh, so wow. and it's and it's still going on it's well well known yeah mm -hmm. it's been a beautiful thing. All right, we got some final questions. Okay. What has your journey been like? Like, if you, you know, I know you couldn't see all this at the beginning, but when you, ref do you sit back and reflect sometime? Or, or, <laughs> or you always <laughs> going to the next thing? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to go to the next thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes my, my students and, and, and uh, friends and, and acquaintances Keep reminding me of some of the other things that had happened yeah. some time ago, but I'm really interested in moving forward to yeah. the next step. Yeah. Well, we want to also appreciate the prize steps because <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important um, because this is it's, it's the it's part of the history. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's why I do this uh, thing um, just to hear people's story because you, you think you don't really know people until you really talk to them and ask them questions and uh and say wow and you really really eye open you know well you're doing a great job in re re researching these people because i've heard all your other guests and, yeah. <laughs> and you have the same kind of research going on for everybody yeah well you know i mean i've always been inquisitive kind of cat mm -hmm. you know um but you know I think it's important to document because we always talk about we know about Duke Ellington, mm -hmm. we know about Train, but we need to know about Dr. Dawkins and, and Mr. Irby and, and, and you know all the all the those who are here mm -hmm. and uh, with us and 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 who have contributed to the history, mm -hmm. and so that's 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 what I like to do. So you're doing a great job. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Um, Anything else you want to add to the conversation that I may have missed? Well, I'm still in touch with anybody who, who, who's co corresponding through Facebook, so okay. I'm, I, I get to stay in touch with everybody mm -hmm. okay. through Facebook, so all my, my contact information is right there, Okay. and I like to do that. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Doc. We appreciate you, and Enjoy. all the best to you, and, uh, um, and we'll stay in touch with you. I'm going to try to see if we can make that Andrew White thing happen. I'd be glad to work oh, with I, him. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. What do you think the future of jazz education? Mm. What, you know, what, or maybe should I phrase, did I phrase that right? What would you like to see um, in terms of us getting? not only jazz education, but getting our young people, particularly in our community, mm -hmm. exposed to jazz. So. I think you are, are really well on the road to doing that uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in uh, uh, through missions, uh, musicians such as yourself mm -hmm. that, that I know that the, um, you have such high standards mm -hmm. and they get accustomed to really great music. Yeah. It's kind of difficult not to start for it to move forward, and and I do believe in it. It's moving forward. Beautiful, and at, and at how we, oh we got to mention Sunny Sumter, mm -hmm. who's who's the uh, she's the executive director of uh, the DC Jazz Fellowship, graduate of uh, uh, Howard University. Yes, um, um, she's doing wonderful things. Can't can't forget Sunny, <laughs> <laughs> and and. Uh, 
and so I know y'all stay in contact. Right, right. Yeah. Sunny was one of my advisees also. Yeah, yeah. In fact, she was one of the programs that you didn't say anything about that uh, we had uh, established called Music Business. Oh, and yes. she took she took, she took a bachelor's degree in music, but it had a, a component in a heavy component in business. And I was her faculty advisor. Wow. And helped her through the, uh, the some of the difficult um, areas that she had. To... Wow, well, and she I mean, did a, she did a great job as we can yes. see with her oh, work she's, now. She's doing it. She's she's a great advocate, and mm -hmm. a lot of people may not know she's a great performer, absolutely, a great singer, absolutely. And, and, yeah, well, so, her degree included performing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just like yours did. Yes, I mean you, no you expected to perform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, Doc. Thank you again. Um, all the best to you, and uh, we'll stay. We'll keep in touch with you. Thank you. All righty. And this is a conversation in jazz. You you've been listening to the wonderful, the great Mr. Dr. Arthur. When I say Mr. <laughs> Dr. Arthur <laughs> Dawkins, I'm Antonio Parker. This is a conversation in jazz, and we'll see you on the next one. Dr. Dawkins was born October 15, 1935, in Lexington, North Carolina, and in 1940, his family moved to Alexandria, Virginia. In 1952, he graduated from Parker Gray High School. His first major music influence was Mr. E. L. Patterson, his elementary and high school band instructor, who provided his initial formal music training. Dr. Dawkins was encouraged by Mr. Patterson to attend Virginia State College, where he earned his bachelor's in music education in 1956, and he returned to Alexandria to begin his teaching career in instrumental music. In 1959, he replaced Mr. Patterson as band director at Parker Gray High School, and as band director, he continued in the tradition established by Mr. Patterson. The band began to perform halftime shows at football games and presented Parker Gray's first musical, Bye Bye Birdie, in collaboration with the vocal music teacher, Mrs. Jacqueline Green. During the early 1960s, the future of Parker Gray High School was uncertain. However, as band director, he continued to prepare his students for survival in a new environment. Fortunately, many of his students were highly motivated and ready for the challenges. In 1965, Parker Gray became a middle school, where Dr. Dawkins continued as band director until 1969, and concurrent with his teaching, he continued his professional musical development, utilizing his associations with performing musicians in the Washington, D.C. area. As a teenager, Dr. Dawkins was exposed to the great masters of swing and modern jazz, Taking advantage of Alexandria's proximity to Washington, D.C., he was often at the Howard Theater to hear the music of Basie, Ellington, Parker, and Gillespie, among others. Later, he would frequent the club scene to hear Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and their contemporaries. From 1965 to 1967, Dr. Dawkins was a member of the Howard Theater House Band, during which time he and fellow band member Bobby Felder became acquainted. In 1969, he earned his master's degree from the Catholic University of America. From 1969 through 1971, during a period of considerable racial and social unrest, he served as assistant principal at T.C. Williams High School. In 1971, Dr. Dawkins left the Alexandria Public Schools to join Bobby Felder on the music faculty at Federal City College, the predecessor of the University of District of Columbia, remaining there until 1975. He received his PhD in educational psychology from Catholic University of America in 1973. With the intention to continue pursuing a career in psychology and research, he worked as a consultant with the Department of Education and the National Endowment for the Arts. In 1975, he was appointed Director of Jazz Studies at Howard University following the legendary Donald Byrd, 
who established the Jazz Studies program in 1970, one of the earliest such programs in the United States. Under the leadership of Dr. Dawkins, Jazz Studies earned academic accreditation and produced its first graduate in 1978, solidifying the program's status as a degree-granting course of study. In 1983, Howard University became the first HBCU to offer a master's degree in jazz studies under his stewardship. Over three decades, the program has produced several hundred music educators, scholars, and performers, such as Jerry Allen, Wallace Rooney, Davy Yarborough, and Carol DeShiel. He also coordinated the music business program, among the first such programs in the country. In 1987, under the auspices of the State Department, Dr. Dawkins toured seven African countries, leading an ensemble of Howard students. While the education and mentorship of future educators, scholars, and performers was at the core of Dr. Dawkins' vision for jazz at Howard, he initiated other programs which further showcased jazz and exposed his students through personal interaction with an impressive array of world-class musicians. The Howard University Jazz Repertory Orchestra, directed by Dr. Reppert Stone, was the first ensemble of its type to investigate the programmatic potential of modern jazz, presenting the repertoires of Billy Eckstein, Thelonious Monk, and Oliver Nelson. He designed and implemented the Howard University Jazz Oral History Project, which focuses on the oral histories of some of the masters of modern jazz. That body of work is deposited at the Moreland Spingarn Research Center and is being made available to researchers and scholars. As a performer, he continued to take his place in the Washington area professional music scene, and those experiences provided for a career as one of the area's most respected and versatile freelance musicians. Dr. Dawkins became known as a proficient woodwind doubler and saxophonist, who was equally at home in the National Symphony Orchestra as he was in the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Orchestra. He was among the first African-American musicians to regularly perform in the pit orchestras of the major theatrical venues of post-segregationist Washington. And as such, Dr. Dawkins was an important example and a viable conduit for those seeking similar opportunity. For more than 25 years, he served as the musical contractor for the arena stage, considered among the nation's premier regional theaters. And as contractor, he employed hundreds of musicians in a variety of settings, including pit orchestras, sound recordings, television productions, and concerts. Dr. Dawkins would eventually become one of the leading music contractors in metropolitan Washington. A nationally recognized clinician, Dr. Dawkins presented workshops, seminars, and adjudicated at high schools, colleges, and jazz festivals throughout the country. Dr. Dawkins performed and taught regularly at numerous jazz camps in the Midwest, including the Clark Terry Rich Matheson Jazz Camps. He has been active in both the International Association for Jazz Education and the Music Educators National Conference. In 2003, he was elected Vice President of IAJE after serving as the IAJE Director of the Clifford Brown Fellows at IAJE Conferences and the Monterey Jazz Festival. Dr. Dawkins has been the recipient of numerous grants and research awards, and he has published several articles and a book chapter. Among his awards are the Howard University College of Fine Arts Outstanding Faculty Award, the Biddy Golson Jazz Master Award, and the Virginia State University Alumni Certificate of Merit. Dr. Dawkins is a charter member of the Alexandria Fairfax Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. As an educator and performer, Dr. Dawkins has had a long, fruitful, and quietly brilliant career. From modest beginnings, he worked his way to the top of his profession, and along the way, he successfully negotiated the transition from segregation to integration, and pointed out the way for others to follow.